Recently, we saw the return of State of Origin footy to the AFL. Not only was it a great way to raise money for charity for the bushfire appeal, but it was also a great showcase of the game in an NBA all-star-like format. It had everyone asking, why hadn't the AFL done something like this sooner? Well, today I thought we'd look at what the AFL had been doing in the last two pre-seasons. Let's take it back to the 21st of June, 2017. Journalist Damien Barrett exclusively reveals on the footy show that a new form of Australian rules football is being introduced by the AFL, called AFLX. Barrett said that AFLX was, quote, the AFL's attempt to create a form of the game that is going to be similar in concept to cricket's T20. He also said that the game would be a scaled down version of traditional football. What cricket did with the introduction of the T20 format was introduce a version of the game which was generally more appealing to young children and families. And this was something the AFL was looking to emulate with AFLX. It was a shorter version of the game and many of the marketing techniques that the AFL used were similar to ones used by the Big Bash League. Australia's domestic T20 competition. The AFL was possibly looking at the pre-finals by that year to introduce AFLX. There would be two sides filled with players from teams that had been eliminated from the finals. The reality about AFLX is that while the concept was being introduced in 2017, it was something that was being discussed and planned at AFL House for several years. Secret trials of AFLX dated back to March of that year, with one of the trials involving VFL teams Coburg and Port Melbourne, and simulations had been run with AFL Club North Melbourne. It was called AFLX because, as everyone knows, any sport automatically becomes 10 times better when you add an X into the title. Another key part of the strategy was using AFLX to take the game worldwide. It was positioned as a platform that could take AFL to new heights on an international level, mainly due to the fact that it was played on a rectangular ground and not an oval. Cricket is really the only international sport that uses an oval. This is opposed to a rectangular field where sports like soccer, rugby and American football are played. This could be the platform that brings AFL to international markets. AFL CEO Gillan McLaughlin revealed that AFLX's origins came from a lack of AFL grounds in the eastern suburbs of Sydney, a largely rugby dominated area. He even forecast a mini tournament in Hong Kong later that year. This also stemmed from comments early in the year from Port Adelaide chairman David Koch, who said he believed AFLX would be the perfect model to help the AFL push into China. Port Adelaide, of course, playing one regular season match in China a year. Apart from being played on a different type of ground, the game also featured a number of new rules with the purpose of making matches quicker and to free up congestion. The game was also promoted as fun for kids and a great game to play in the park because apparently kicking a football around back and forth, playing markings up or finding two trees to use as goals was too hard. The new rules were games consisting of two 10 minute halves with a two minute half time break in between. Seven players on the field and three on the bench in 2017. In 2018, this was expanded to eight players on the field with six players on the bench. There was a last touch out of bounds rule and the field umpire would throw the ball up to begin play at the start of each half and after a super goal was scored. A super goal was worth 10 points and it was when a goal was scored from outside the 40 metre arc. Even though the aim for AFLX was for it to be introduced during the pre-finals by, it was announced about a month before finals that AFLX would likely be taking place next year. It was later announced that AFLX would take place during the 2018 AFL pre-season. It would be a tournament which would take place over three days, from the 15th to the 17th of February. It would be played in Adelaide, Melbourne and Sydney, with all 18 clubs split into three groups of six. Each night there would be a round-robin style tournament, with the two clubs with the most wins squaring off in a grand final to finish off the night. The AFL's ground, Marble Stadium, then known as Etihad, was used. But Rugby Stadium, Allianz Stadium in Sydney, and Cooper Stadium, Adelaide, which was where Adelaide United played in the A-League, were also used, reflecting the aims of AFLX to introduce the game to grounds which traditionally played soccer or rugby. Now, likely because of the risk of injury to key players, there was some concern from most clubs. 
The games were similar in a sense to actual AFL preseason games. They're known as the JLT Community Series. AFLX was made up of mainly young players or depth players from clubs list, with a few experienced players mixed in there. Now, the general response from most coaches was actually pretty positive. There was intrigue about the game and wondering what form it would take with all these new rules. But there was one coach who expressed his doubts, Chris Fagan from the Brisbane Lions. While he said he hoped the concept would work, he also expressed his scepticism towards the concept in an interview with AAP. He said the concept doesn't engage fans, which is ironic because a lot of the marketing around AFLX was built around getting crowds engaged. He said, quote, players enjoy playing it, but I don't know if fans like it or not. Fans love the opportunity to celebrate after goal, and in that game you can't do it because it moves too quickly. I found these comments kind of ironic in hindsight because the Brisbane Lions would actually go on to win one of the treasured AFLX uh, X's. In fact, it was feel-good stories all around for all the teams who won each of the three respective tournaments. Brisbane finally experienced some success after struggling for nearly a decade. Melbourne's premiership drought since 1964 and all their struggles in the 2000s was all worth it when they were able to raise that prestigious X. And the Adelaide Crows completed a clean sweep, winning AFL X, the AFLW Premiership and AFL Premiership. Now as you can probably tell because I've been mentioning it a lot, the AFL was really trying to emulate the BBL with this new game. Now I know that the BBL isn't everyone's cup of tea, and even the T20 format isn't loved by everyone. The game is very over the top with fireworks, pumping music, and an emphasis on crowd engagement. But it can't be denied that the league is popular, especially with families with young children. But if you don't like the antics of the BBL, the AFLX made the BBL look subtle in comparison. Now, the official launch of AFLX was really a precursor of things to come. It featured a parachutist, acrobatics and fire. But when the actual tournament came around, the AFL said BBL will match your loud music, pyrotechnics and fireworks. We've got plenty of those. But we'll also add in silver footballs, flashing goalposts, super goals. <coughs> Sorry, I mean... Super, super, super. That's better a rock climbing wall, and plenty of activities all around the ground to distract fans from what's going on on the field. We also had players pulling out with injuries. Injuries that were bad enough to miss AFLX, but still be ready for round one. Take Jack Billings, who was one of the faces of the official launch, out with a hamstring injury which would keep him out for two weeks. Now the reception coming out of the tournament was largely critical. Hey, AFLX, AFLX so. bobbed up and it was a fascinating concept and absolutely did it. I mean, did I'm not sure how well received it was by the general populace. Did it have a big impact on you, for example, Sam? AFLX? AFLX, yeah. I've had entrees that meant more. <laughs> <laughs> it felt very forced and for something that was supposed to be exciting and faster, it was actually quite boring to be honest. The game felt very formulaic. By stripping away some of the rules and strategies of AFL, you had a simple game just going up and down the field. In a format that was fairly uncompetitive because it was just the AFL preseason. Probably the harshest criticism came from ABC Offsiders columnist Richard Hines. In an article aptly titled, AFLX, if you wanted to kill AFL stone dead, you turn it into this shallow yawn fest. He said, AFLX is the first attempted use of Victoria's new voluntary euthanasia laws. He also later went on to say that AFLX is a nothing of a game, one that combines neither the best aspects of Australian rules football nor those of any other sport, but rather dilutes them so greatly that even leather lung commentary box brookers struggle to maintain their well paid enthusiasm. Now, there was not a lot of movement for AFLX for the rest of the year. There were none of the hypothesized international matches, like in Hong Kong or China, and there was no attempt to try and reintroduce it for the pre-finals buy. But the upcoming 2019 season meant major changes to AFLX. News and rumors started to circulate shortly after the end of the 2018 AFL season that the AFL was going to lean into an all-star-like format for the next tournament, similar to the NBA. 
clubs. This not only meant an end to actual AFL clubs participating as teams, but a concerted effort to get some of the game's biggest names involved to help increase fan interest. Buddy Franklin and Dustin Martin were among the players who were sounded out and rejected the offer, but the AFL eventually secured four big names, Jack Revolt, Patrick Dangerfield, Nat Fife and Eddie Betts. The tournament would now just be confined to one night at Marvel Stadium, featuring four new teams, the Rampage, the Flyers, the Bolts and the Deadlies, all spruced out in colourful uniform. There were also new rules introduced like the Gatorade Game Changer, where a team could nominate a player for the last five minutes of a game and any points that they scored would be double. But most importantly, a game of rock, paper, scissors replaced the traditional coin toss. There would be a live player draft with the team captain selecting their own teammates. Clubs would notify the league if there were any players dealing with injury issues and who would not be eligible to be drafted. A maximum of four players could be drafted from each AFL club. Eddie Betts' team, the Deadlies, would be an all-Indigenous team, with Betts having his own special pool of Indigenous talent to draft to his side. Now, as you can probably tell so far, I've been pretty critical of AFLX up to this point. But I'll be honest, I actually really like the draft. Unlike a lot of other aspects of AFLX, the draft was not overproduced and it didn't feel too forced. It was a simple set with two hosts, Nat Edwards and Hamish McLaughlin, and it allowed players to show and use their personalities. A key reason why they were chosen as team captains was not only because they are great leaders and players, but they have some of the leading football personalities in the industry. I think we'll get him along. I like him. He's okay, great. Zach Fisher is your last selection. He's quick too. He'll be happy Nat. about five grand, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Now in the lead up to the tournament, we had clubs and players withdrawing, again, but we were finally ready to kick off on February the 22nd. Now I'll admit, while I still wasn't a massive fan of AFLX, I did feel that this year's version was better than last year's. It might have been because the game had now been around for over a year, or because there were now gun players playing the game. Really it was probably a combination of both. But there was definitely a certain intrigue to seeing Premiership teammates Jack Revolt and Alex Rance playing on each other, or seeing a midfield of Nat Fife, Marcus Bontempelli, Scott Pendlebury, Travis Boak, Josh Kennedy, Callum Ward and Stephen Cornelio. It was great seeing Eddie Betts and Sean Burgoyne team up together, two legends of the game and the respective South Australian clubs playing together. Or Patrick Cripps actually playing in a good team, getting more wins in one night in AFLX than he did the entire previous season with Carlton. The tournament was a round robin style format again, culminating in the rampage robbing the Flyers in the grand final. Still not over it. On the 6th of August, it was announced that AFLX was being cancelled to allow for a greater focus on AFLW. And I think it's pretty fair to say that there was widespread heartache throughout the AFL industry. It hey, is. you'd be shattered, Scotty, wouldn't you? With the, with the big news, you'd be devastated. With what, with what happened? What's happening? Well, AFLX is dead <laughs> after the two-year experiment. You were one it of its is. main supporters. No, it was I, a, only, I was in the second year. Yeah. The first round, I didn't make the cut for my own club. Right. But then I made the, the, um, the last cut. Which what was, was selected, who did you play so. for again? Um, the purple side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure. That, uh, high Flyers or Flyers? The Flyers. Five Fife Flyers. His team. Fife's team. I knew Fife was the captain. Yeah, a bit flat. We um, we yeah. lost the granny last year, so it wasn't a great sort of six months when we lost the yeah. AFL granny and the AFL X granny. Oh, yeah. So, um, That'll, yeah, it's like disappointing it for all the Flyers. You know, we had, I think we were building towards 15,000 members and mm. sponsors were coming left, right and centre. So Scott, stop yeah. it because it was a rubbish <laughs> Mickey Mouse horse concept, which never <laughs> flew anyway. No a, one cared, mate. We had absolutely we no had one cared. Great. That year's EJ Whitten's Legends game still went ahead with using the AFLX format, possibly the last time we'll ever see it. Now that I've covered AFLX's short and weird history, I'll run over why I think it didn't succeed. I think while it's important to engage with a younger demographic and keep them interested, AFLX came off as very commercialised and forced. The marketing and entertainment felt like something thought up in, in a board meeting 
to be marketed towards kids in the 2000s. I can understand why they followed the T20 model, but it was weird to try and simplify a game that was already around the same standard length as a T20 match. And by doing so, it made the game blander by changing a lot of rules. Now I understand why a rectangular field was used, as it's a good way to play the game where the AFL is not popular in areas like New South Wales and Queensland, which are largely rugby dominated. It's always important to find new ways to grow and innovate the game, but there were possibly better avenues to do this. Maybe instead of looking to overseas, which seemed to be the AFL's big goal, look internally at ways to promote the game locally for suburban and grassroots footy clubs. It was almost like there was a new competition that had also been recently introduced. A new competition that had attention taken away from it in its second and third seasons because of AFLX. And potential funds that could have been spent on it were spent on AFLX instead. A league that has helped save and revive local footy clubs because of increased participation numbers among girls and women. Who knows what the future is for AFLX? I think it will likely remain as an odd bit of AFL history, perfect for a question in a pub trivia night. But you never know. The XFL was recently revived this year to a largely good reception, so maybe there could be a place for AFLX in the future. Hey guys, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching my first video. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done anything of this kind, so any comments or feedback would be greatly appreciated. I'm planning on rolling out more videos like this, I've got a few planned, but any ideas or suggestions for future content would be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel, share it with everyone. Also, follow me on Twitter and check out all my work on The Raw and for AFL Tasmania. Cheers.